Hey, Brendo, Steve here. Hey, Larson. Welcome back to Going In Raw, another news brief. It's Friday. We got some uh, more details on the unfortunate releases from WWE and, of course, NXT after we were done filming, as had been reported that would be expected the case. Uh, Brian Alvarez had said that uh, the expected NXT releases uh, would be coming uh, at around 5 Eastern and uh, yeah, in fact, a little bit before that, yeah, a little yeah, bit before yeah. that is when it started yeah. happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, so we got some details of that. I don't know what to make about this other thing, this Vince Axios story. We'll get to that later. Yeah, sure. And then we're going to be answering your questions. Yeah, a lot of them. Yes, you guys, got a lot of but questions out there. Got a lot of questions. Want to answer? Before that, let's let's talk about details of these releases and the latest Wrestling Observer newsletter. Dave Melser goes into a, a good amount of detail as to why. WWE released nine talents from the main roster, plus 13 more from NXT, uh, saying this, the key of the releases were talent making main roster money but not being used on the main roster, and with the idea that they were not going to be used in the future. Uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's time in versus how much money you are paid versus return on investment, said one WWE official regarding the talent cuts. Melser had this to say about Mustafa Ali. Uh, quote, his release is, was apparently because the decision was made that they did not see using him on the main roster. He was making main roster money, but it was notable. They didn't wait for his television program to play out or even wait a week to write him all out of a storyline. Ali had requested publicly be released in January of 2020, likely believing he would fit in better some, well, uh, else, sorry, elsewhere, whether that be AEW or Japan, but was turned down. House of Wrestling reached out to their sources regarding Ollie's release. Uh, these sources stated, quote, one possible reason that was given to us, not Stephen Larson House of Wrestling, right. for Ollie's release was his recent politically charged vignette on NXT. The change in character had been pitched by Ollie for the main roster in the past, but was never followed through on. Once some in WWE saw the vignette on NXT TV, some freaked out because Fox had expressed nervousness about Ollie heading, <clears throat> excuse me, heading in that direction. The political angle was dropped shortly thereafter. Let's take a break here. Yeah, sure. Um, oh, qu I, just a really quick correction. Uh, when you said Ali had requested public to be released in January 2020, it was actually 2022, according to the notes here. So, Oh, sorry. My bad. My yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I watched the the NXT vignette. Uh, so, like, gosh, how long ago was it? It was a while ago that he did the ago. initial one that he put yeah. on his social media. Never yeah. aired on TV, I don't believe. And then, so that was dropped, never got picked up, never went anywhere. He did it again on NXT it, during his program with Don Mysterio uh, for a North American title. Mm -hmm. And it's it's like a really well shot vignette. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously it's him in a, in a, in a green screen. That stuff's done really well. They have some mm -hmm. stuff with Dom and Wes Lee in it. They have a bunch of like really creative B-roll in there. Yeah, yeah. It was really well done. Yeah, I was really surprised when NXT picked that up because of what we had heard in the past about how, like, you know, there was not they, – they couldn't – Ollie and WWE creative, specifically Vince at one point, couldn't get on the same page exactly on how to approach it. Um, you know, man, I know you and I probably feel the same way. I would think that most of Ali has a good head on his shoulders and he wouldn't, you know, rock uh, – he, he wouldn't uh, uh, poke any certain bears when it comes to certain – uh, certain directions with that particular kind of content. On the other hand, I can see as a general rule or a general idea, given how polarized and divisive things are these days when it comes to anything political. I mean, they're arguing over a dude wearing shorts in the Senate these days. It's it's absolutely asinine. Um, and, and, and I can understand why there might be a blanket policy against that. And with Mustafa Ali, and again, I think you'd probably agree with me on that, on this, he's, he's every time he's been given anything, he is really like run with it best he can. It's just that he's always given crap. Like he was saddled with the retribution thing, which when that happened, I know you and I were both like, oh, he could turn this into something, but then they wouldn't really give retribution what they needed to succeed. Wins. Which was wins, which was yeah. demonstrating that there are any sort of a threat, even yeah. even moral victories, which would mean like, you know, losses in the ring, but a victory nonetheless, you know, to, to prove yeah. their point. Yeah. Kind of like what they I guess they're doing with carrying cross right now. Yeah. They wouldn't even give him that. No. So, no. you know, lost. it just honestly seems like from from like day one, 
He did a lot of great work in the cruiserweight division. He did. Once he got to main roster, it, it just it just felt like him and WWE could never quite see eye to eye with how best to utilize his immense talents. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a sad situation. Um, a guy like that who obviously, obviously has got such a such a creative like bone in his body, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think that kind of thing would actually go over well in AEW because I don't think he's the kind of guy who's just good wrestler. He's yeah. got creative ideas for characters and that kind of stuff really if you have a solid grasp on that they they'll give him plenty of opportunity I they think will. in AEW to do but, that. I mean we've seen that with Tony Storm recently. We've seen it with Swerve. Yeah. There's right. a, numerous examples where it seems like a wrestler will come up with an idea, a pivot, a change for their character. Yeah. And it, 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 and they've been able to run with it. Mm-hmm. Like if you if you just go back and look at the the promo material that Mustafa Ali has shot and put on his own social media. Yeah. There is such a wide variety of characters that he has essentially pitched publicly to the WB seemingly. Right. You know, due to this, this, and it's really well filmed. It's all incredibly filmed stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's probably four or five different character ideas that he's workshopped, sure. seemingly shot stuff for. Yeah. And basically, none of them got picked up by WB. Yeah. He could go back to any single one of those, and whether it be yeah. an Impact, AEW, New Japan, wherever he lands, mm-hmm. just pick one, do it, and it'll be awesome. He's a yeah. fantastic in ring performer. Yeah. Right. A stellar wrestler. He's a great promo. He's insanely creative. Mm-hmm. If you look yeah. at the stuff he's done. Yeah. Like he seems like the type of guy. Yeah, you mentioned AEW. I think literally anywhere, but you know, his his particular skill set and and his creativity seemed like it'd be a good fit there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I'm, anywhere I'm, he goes, he's gonna be successful, I feel like. I, I really do hope that, you know, uh he takes yeah, because you look, here's the thing about these releases. I get the, fee- you know, Tony Khan, this dude loves his shiny new toys. And when there's releases, he will pick them up and he'll give them a shake. A lot of the time, that'll be it. <laughs> and, and then they'll be relegated to like Rampage or Ring of Honor or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I'm excited to see what, there's a lot There's a lot of matchups. Let's be completely honest here, man. There's a lot of matchups for uh, what's his actual name? Adil Adem, I think is his name. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot of matchups for this dude. Yeah, in uh, all over the place, and yeah. and AEW sort of is the nexus of that. He can land there, and then you know use that to go do all those matches uh, in all the other places. So yeah, yeah. He, I, I think he'll be one that is going to be highly sought after. I, I, I really think so do, too. and. It's probably going to be for the better for him. You know, I know he tried to make it in WWE and I couldn't imagine how frustrating it would be to be in the place where you want to be and always be close to cracking something and then always just to get shot down. And that's just that's the nature of wrestling. If you can't get on the same page as the people cutting the paychecks, then it's 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 not going to be a great situation. No, no, it's not. Uh, As for Dolph Ziggler, who really had been used much on television since his feud in NXT with Braun Breaker. I think he's been only on a handful of times. Mm -hmm. Uh, Melzer stated, quote, that Vince McMahon was never high on Dolph, even when he made him world champ twice. He told the writing team that this was was short-term and that he wasn't a top guy. I wonder how that's actually phrased when he's getting that info across. All right, listen. I would be surprised. Like, ah, we're going to put the belt on him for a couple weeks. Don't, Don't write him like he's a top guy. (laughs) <laughs> God re- damn it, pal. God damn it. He's not a tough man. He could have fooled me. <laughs> this guy was ever. He was Dolph all was over. one of the guys that got me back into wrestling in 2011, 2012. You know, dude, it look, and I'm not, I am not, you know, commenting on whether or not I think I agree or disagree with Vince McMahon. Um, I think Dolph Ziggler is one of them cats that like probably should have left the company a couple times and then had the big return. Um, yeah, done the maybe, Cody Drew McIntyre thing. Yeah, I think he probably would have benefited from that. Uh, here, here's the thing about Dolph. When when we hear something like this, 
Vince didn't consider himself. Vince didn't consider him a top guy. I don't necessarily think that's the like slander or slam that a lot of people would take that as. Just because he doesn't see you as Brock, guess what? He sees one dude as Brock Lesnar. That's Brock Lesnar. He sees one John Cena, one et cetera, et cetera, go down the line. It's clear that Vince McMahon saw Dolph Ziggler in uh in in a good light because he used him all the damn time. That's a not utility a player. Not he was, he was utility utility role. He that was, was his role in like the company. Yeah. Top. It was like him and Miz, top utility players. Yeah, yeah. And you know he had the dude. He had this guy working everybody, and I got yeah. the feeling that it was the kind of situation where Vince would use Dolph to analyze wrestlers coming in. How best can we utilize these? Well, people? I think of the situation where Dolph was one of the better in-ring performers. He could put on, for the most part, a decent ma- to good match with anybody. Mm-hmm. Similar to how he used Brett to, to have that match against Tom McGee. Yeah. All right, let's see what this newcomer this call up from nxt whatever the case may be let's see what they have let's put them against someone who can work a mm-hmm. variety of styles who is a good worker yeah and if they can deliver against Dolph, all right maybe there's potential there right yeah i could totally see that being the case like you can't yeah. look at that's like often... the most utility guy <laughs> absolutely you can't look at how often Dolph was on tv and think that Vince McMahon had a negative thought, uh, had a negative opinion about the guy, so he didn't think him of him as a top guy. I, I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure I ever saw him as man a in 2011, 2012. Guy. I uh, his his run top his guy run to me. with Big E and AJ was prime Dolph Ziggler, and I think if they were able to take that and expand on it, yeah. Yeah. Then and and really utilized to its best. Then I could have been convinced that he was a top guy. There, there was his Survivor Series performance that one yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. There he was were a sole Survivor. Yeah. There were instances where it was like, man, I could really see this. But you know, if Vince didn't see that, hey, if Vince didn't see that, it's never gonna happen. You know. Yeah. That 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 wasn't gonna happen. But. Man, I I will guarantee you, Dolph Ziggler made a lot of money with that company. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and and he should be absolutely over the moon with how that career turned out up till now. The guy hasn't aged in twenty years either, so I wouldn't be shocked yeah. to see him back in a year. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know, I know. I mean, like you know, his brother Ryan's in AEW. Dolph's been on being the elite. Mm-hmm, yeah, wouldn't surprise me to see him land there. Mm-hmm. But who knows? I think you know, he like, has he has he has he has pursuits and endeavors outside the world of pro wrestling too. Maybe he's going to concentrate on those. Wasn't there some? Yeah, I want to be a stand-up comedian. Wasn't yeah. there some reporting on him like requesting his release not that long ago? That sounds I right. Could be, I could be wrong about that, but yeah, I don't know. That dude, he's got a lot lined up, and he's got probably yeah. you would think plenty of money in the bank. So yeah, Dolph will yeah. be fine. Not everybody's going to be a Brock Lesnar man. No, no. Uh, as Dave also mentioned that, quote, all of the those cuts that had main roster contracts have 90-day non-competes would be able to work elsewhere starting December 20th. Okay. All right. All right. So, so then uh, as for the NXT releases, 13. Double-check my, my count here. One, two. I think it was 22 all together, so 13 would make sense. All right. There we go. So that uh, included Daba Kato, Quincy Elliott, Dana Brooke, Mansoor, uh, Mace, Masse, Masse. Uh, Shanky, Ulisa Leon, Ikamanjiro, Daniel MacArthur, Kevin Ventura Cortez, Alex- Alexis Gray, Brooklyn Barlow, and Bryson Montana. So I think the, the last few mm-hmm. level up, maybe Performance Center. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Uh, right. Uh, recruits. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's, I'm bummed out Dana Brooke got released. I know. By all accounts, she worked so hard yeah man you know she it sounded like she was the first one in last one out and just Mm -hmm. working 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 trying to improve Mm -hmm. trying to improve at a craft and she never really it never seemed like they gave her a real opportunity to do much of anything i know she had a 24 7 title but they kind of dumped on all that Mm -hmm. it's it's a bummer that that she put in all this work and at the end of the day just got released I can't. Yeah, if you go back and watch that awesome doc series I did, Breaking Ground. Yeah, yeah. it was it was terrific, and uh, and she was featured so much mm-hmm. on that. 
uh, I thought, I, you know, it, it's obvious that they at one point thought that, oh, OK, she could be she could be a breakout star. Yeah. Um, unfortunately for, you know, in her case, that didn't ever quite come to fruition. <laughs> Last I heard, yeah. like they were taking away uh, like signs that were saying, give Dana Brooke a chance or something like that, which is horrible. Yeah, that's that that's that's bogus, man. Yeah, really bogus. Um, uh, it's, uh, speaking of uh, Mason Monsois, they yeah. uh, they did a stream last night. Yeah, uh, where they were talking about a, a Twitch stream where they were talking about um, a lot of the stuff that was that was going on. And I'm trying to find some of the nuts and bolts of it here. Did but, you see the uh, the fixer video they 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 played on there? I did. Yeah, they, yeah. They shot like apparently they shot like a bunch of other sort of vignettes as pitches uh yep. for their post maxim male model uh uh run and uh yeah i thought i you know it's all really really well shot yeah yeah and and they do have really great chemistry again a couple of creative guys if they're given a shot at aw or impact i could see impact mm-hmm. you know just let them do their thing wrestlers are so, like some of the wrestlers are so much more savvy about digital media these days oh yeah Oh yeah, like it's it kind of shocking. Like, dude, every single wrestler out there, every indie wrestler out there, needs to be watching YouTube tutorials on how to shoot, how to light, how to, how to edit, how to edit, how to how get to record good audio. Decent audio. Yep. You need to look. You got a decent dude. I swear to God, Larson, half of these indie promos I see that are recorded on video, it's just echoey room. Like, it's just like, hey everybody, I'm coming here to a. CW wrestling, not 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 at Action Coast, but like man, so many promos just sound like dog shit, and it's like yeah. honestly, yeah. it can look like dog shit if you have a mic. This right here, this phone right here has a microphone that is really really. Larson, Pretty for decent. twenty dollars, for twenty yeah. dollars, you can actually get. I looked this up the other day. It's nuts. I'm gonna get one. Wireless laughs. Oh, $20, yeah. you plug it into your phone, and it's got, it comes with two wireless laughs. Amazing. Yeah. And Amazing. It, just, it gets good audio. Amazing technology. You don't, need, you don't need this right here. You don't need this. $20. No. no. That's I mean, imagine time. your microphone would probably sound better than a $20 lav, but if you get decent audio with a $20 lav, and, and, you know, Honestly, every cent counts, you go with a $20 lav. These days, most microphones, if you can get close to it, it sounds fine. It sounds yeah. good. It sounds better than if some dude in a parking garage oh, yeah, is yeah, speaking. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. 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 Uh, let's move on to this because I'm not sure if this matters or not. Uh, <laughs> um, Axios had a potentially interesting story yesterday in which they speculated on how Vince McMahon could be preparing for for his exit from WB. Apparently, it all hinges on an SEC filing uh, from early August, which stated that the new UFC WB Rawgate mutant business entity, <laughs> TKO Holdings, had, quote, re- registered all of McMahon's shares for sale, thus enabling him to avoid the lockup period that applies to other TKO stockholders like Endeavor and Silver Lake. Story continues, quote, on first glance, this simply seems to be about giving McMahon flexibility or maybe even given TKO flexibility given the ongoing investigation, particularly given that the subsequent registration statement filed last week didn't include any underwriters. But but that same filing says that McMahon, along with two other TKO executives, will be selling stockholders in this offering. So there was also the bit in this Axios article about an August SEC filing where TKO said that McMahon could be a negative it could he yeah. could generate negative publicity for TKO yeah. because of all the investigations and whatnot. Yes. Yes. Um, it's a pretty extensive paragraph about wh- why Vince is bad for business, essentially. Yeah, no, it, that's yeah. exactly right. Um, it's interesting because we've known that Endeavor now has technically the voting power to kick out Vince McMahon. Um, from what we understood the reasons they could do that are fairly limited. Yeah. Yeah. That being said, there is some potentially inflammatory shit that Vince McMahon is bringing to the table here. And you got to ask yours. Number one, this is clearly um, doing their due diligence and making sure their asses are covered. 
and they have to be completely transparent when it comes to the SEC. Public and traded company, they got to be. Vince could be bad for business, but this could, you know, it, it all depends, man. Is is we're going to find out probably sooner than later. Is Vince McMahon <laughs> did he get played like a sucker, <laughs> or or do they legitimately want him around and they're going to try to protect him best they can? Yeah, who knows? I have the uh, the uh, the statement here from the filing. McMahon's membership on our board could expose us to negative publicity and or have other adverse financial and operational impacts on our business and membership also may result in additional scrutiny or otherwise exacerbate the other risks described herein. Any of these outcomes could directly or indirectly have adverse financial and operational impacts on our business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. again, this could be nothing. Could be something we don't know. Yeah. If in uh, three months' time we find out that Vince sells all stock, uh, then maybe this, they're onto something here. Yeah. Don't know. Yeah. Don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, like you said, yeah. If he just sells a, a shit ton of stock, then I'm out of here. God damn yeah. it. You hear about that meeting, right? He's walking around with a cane and he starts scolding people for not clapping for him, not cheering for him. I know. Yeah. God damn it. I mean, like, I'll be honest with you, I do the same thing to my family when I walk into a room. I'm Steve here, God damn it, cheer for me. You say it just like that, too. <laughs> well, yeah, of course, you don't. You don't walk. You start That's... doing this in front of everybody on Christmas. Come on, get on my cane. <laughs> Come do you on, want God your gifts it. or not? <laughs> <laughs> do you want your gifts? Or... Yeah, it's how every Christmas starts in the hero. household. Yeah. Do you want your gifts or not? God damn it. Oh my gosh! Anyway, Steve, you want to answer some questions? <laughs> yeah. Uh, before we answer some questions, if you got you guys are obviously you're not watching this live because uh, we're not doing this live, but do us a solid, man. Hit that subscribe button. We're on the road to one ninety eight eight ninety one. Uh, it's a very exciting number for us because it's a palindrome. We like palindromes here. We do. We do absolutely. Uh, so if you can hit that subscribe button, that notify bell. Uh, that would really help us also hit that like button. Also, if you want to go the extra mile, if you want to participate in our huge predictions challenges, which is starting next weekend, dude, wow. we'll, we'll, real quick here. Elimination Chamber 3 a.m. Pacific, yay or nay? What do you think? It's got to be a yay, right? No, it's three in the morning. We're not going to do chamber at three in the morning. Oh, man, that's so early. Am I going to have to do that solo for MF Steve? No, man, no, you got to do a solo. I mean, like, all right, hey, sorry, Mrs. Ann Larson. You got to sleep in one of the other rooms or something. We should get like an Airbnb. You should come over here to do it, man. Three o'clock. Oh, I'm going to be miserable at three in the morning, man. <laughs> Look, they're. In your room, in my room, we're both going to be miserable. I'm going to be slightly less miserable sitting here in the comfort of my home. Three is the worst. That's yeah, literally, th there's no but there's no worse hour than that. No, there's not. Because you're not getting enough sleep to feel anywhere close to resting. Like and at after least, we're done with that, it's going to be, yeah. what, seven in the morning? I can't go back to sleep. Like at least at two. Wait, what day of the week is it? I don't know. I assume like it's Friday or Saturday. Fuck, I don't know. Australia is so weird. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, dude, I don't know. That's one we might want to consider. Let's just do the watch along and we'll do the fucking review later in the day or some shit yeah. like that. Why don't we just sleep, wake up at nine and just like, hey, everybody, cue up the, the thing. We'll watch it together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know about that one. I, th there is something about the solidarity of everybody getting up three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, but no. we could do that at nine in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, what I was going to say is our huge predictions challenge coming up. Um, we don't have to worry about that. That's February. We don't have to worry about that. We don't have to worry so. about that for a while. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, our huge predictions challenge is coming up. Uh, week of Champions 2. It's going to uh, include No Mercy, uh, Wrestle Dream, and, of course, Fast Lane. Uh, a week from today, a week from Friday, we got we got SmackDown next weekend, next Friday. We do, we do. Yeah, yeah. that's exciting. We're probably gonna do a friendo meetup like before. I would imagine. Yeah, I would imagine. Yeah. Uh, so uh, keep an eye out for details on that one. Uh, but yeah, Indeed. if you click on that join button on YouTube, it costs five dollars a month. You get the bonus episodes, which we're now moving to Wednesdays because yeah. we're trying to like we're trying to figure out. We, we got these news briefs now. We got friendo club wrestling, all sorts of stuff. Uh, yeah, there's a lot so, going on. Overruns are going to be on Wednesdays, uh, and so you get the bonus episodes, question threads, and uh, and the predictions challenge. You can also get all that stuff at patreon.com forward slash Steve and Larson. We did have a new patron today, and I want to give him a shout out. And, of course, his name is, oh, good name, Stephen 
Rancière. Rancière. Got a question, Got a question from Stephen. Oh, awesome. Well, why don't we kick off our questions with Stephen's question? Sure, sure. Stephen here says, if AEW goes to 12 pay-per-view shows a year, how many do you think will be more like the non-canon shows like Forbidden Door? I, dude, I honestly think that they are going to be, it's going to be like WWE. They're, they're going to, you know, there's yeah. going to be like some sort of B-ish level shows. Yeah. But, I mean, obviously yeah. full gear revolution, double or nothing, all in, all out. Those are going to be the marquee pay-per-view events. But then you got, like, it seems like Grand Slam might be elevated to pay-per-view. Yeah, right. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of the theme episodes like Winter is Coming. Winter is Coming might be the Or uh, yeah. Beach Bash or, you know, f- uh, uh, Fighter Fest. Mm-hmm, yeah. If some of those get bumped up to pay-per-view status. Yeah, I could, I could see that being the case. They have Absolutely. some branding. I mean, maybe even Blood and Guts. I don't know. Yeah. Um, they have some re- some established branding. They might just rely and be like, all right, you're pay-per-view now. So if like in two weeks they announce Winter is Coming pay-per-view in December, then mm-hmm. – it'd be seem pretty obvious that's going to be their, their approach. Yeah. Yeah. And as we've seen in the past, things happen at winter is coming, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, not so much yeah. the last two years, but three years ago, it was like, can you want the title, title there? Yeah. 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 Uh, all right. Let's see here. Other questions. Uh, Bulldog 93 says, um, what network do you think will ultimately land raw and NXT? And do you think it will all end up? And do you think it will all just end up? And do you think raw will move away from Monday nights to possibly Wednesday to go head to head with dynamite? If I was a betting man, and since we're not talking channel points here, I'm not. I'd say that it's Raw and NXT are going to stay on USA. Yeah, right. Yeah, that that would be my my inclination. Now, it's not to say that they might not sh- shift some things around. I would expect Raw just maybe move to Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. NXT to Thursday, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then of course SmackDown seemingly staying on Friday. I mean, ideally, you'd have. Wouldn't it be great if they did Raw Tuesday, NXT Wednesday, and SmackDown Thursday? Yeah, that'd be amazing. That'd be fantastic. That'd be really great. That'd be freaking awesome. Be great. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't. I honestly don't know. Like, obviously, Amazon has like a shit ton of money to throw around. Yeah, but um, they don't have a TV station. <laughs> 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 they just gonna perform live for Jeff Bezos. I know exactly. Here, I'll I'll cut a a a one and a half billion dollar check to have matches in my backyard. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Bezos Championship Wrestling. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they're gonna rebrand it. <laughs> uh, Monday Night Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's gonna be all right. It's gonna be like Raw Underground, but Bezos. Yeah, exactly. Instead of Shane matches. McMahon, <laughs> stop, just, stop this match. Whims. All right, this match is done. Whims. It's done. Oh, that was funny. Oh uh, my goodness. Yeah, I don't know. Money talks. If they offer double USA Network offering, oh yeah, it sure. ain't gonna matter. <laughs> They're gonna put it on. You know, fucking Tubi or whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Somebody, dude, I'm sorry, but somebody fucking, have you seen that vignette of Scripps and his friends? Yeah, 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 And so yeah. I saw you somebody. Said it to me, yeah. Yeah, somebody posted and said, it's going to be great when this moves to Tubi. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. Man. Oh, yeah, my I don't goodness. Know. I, I think money talks. I think if I was a bet man, I'd probably say the same thing as you, but. Money talks, you know. Oh, like, yeah. Uh, no, definitely. I mean, I'm, they only got a 40% bump for SmackDown. Mm-hmm, yeah, right. And that's yeah. moving it off of network TV. I know there's mm-hmm. four primetime specials on NBC, but that's not the same as being a primetime network television every Friday, you know. Yeah, dude, if Bezos offers like double what USA Network's going to offer, it's going to end up on Amazon. Yeah, it'll be on Amazon Prime, is, I know. The question is, is he going to do that, you know? Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, Deddy here says, if Raw and or SmackDown get moved around, who do you think will win the new Wednesday Night War? Do you think that would be would put Bezos? <laughs> do you think that would be would put Raw or SmackDown on? A, well, I guess not be SmackDown. Raw on Wednesday nights. Oh man, you know, I yes, I kind of do, only because like right now WWE super hot, like it's a really hot product. So like, I don't know why wouldn't they? You know what I mean? Drive them out of business. You know, I mean, I I don't know if I don't I don't think it would be to do that. I think W. Okay, let let me ask you this. 
there's other days of the week they can move Raw to. Why wouldn't they then? What do you think? What do you because here's the thing, everything else sort of sucks. Like Tuesday, eventually you're gonna run into like basketball. Basketball, yeah. And same with Thursday. Wednesday's Wednesday like the one it's like the one weeknight. Yeah, but like TNT's got that Tuesday, Thursday shit on lock. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Wednesday's kind of the one night where it's like, ah, eh, it's kind of free ish. What's a bit what do you think is a bigger what do you think is more do you think they think is more competition? Sleep. Dynamite or Monday night football? Yeah, or sleep. <laughs> oh, like, Monday night football, without a doubt. Monday night football is more competition than Oh yeah, because we we Dynamite. literally see the effect Monday night football has on the numbers. Yeah, absolutely. So why not put it on Wednesday? Not put you on Tuesday. I mean? Look how well NXT is doing on Tuesday. Um yeah, I don't disagree with that. I don't think basketball, I'll, I'll be honest with you, like, look, man, at some point you just gotta bet on your own product. You know, you can't yeah, run away from everything. I mean, I know basketball does good numbers. It doesn't do NFL numbers. It ain't NFL. No, it is not NFL. It doesn't do numbers. NFL numbers. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think I think I think to you know, I don't know. Fuck it. I, keep it on fucking Monday, you know. I don't want to know. Take Tuesday night raw doesn't sound right. It sounds kind of stupid. Thirty years it's been Monday night raw. Yeah. Yeah, no. Just yeah. just t- take it on the chin for a couple months when football's around, and then the rest of the year it's all yours. It's all yours. Do whatever you it's want. It's all yours. Got exactly. nothing else to worry about. Yep. Like regional baseball coverage, you think that's going to affect Monday Night Raw ratings? No. No, no, nobody watches baseball anymore, man. I do. I still watch baseball. I, I know you Cur- do, and I appreciate that. Accursed Hawk says, uh, am I in the min- minority for not one to see Cody versus Roman 2? It's not like I dislike Cody. I'd just r- rather see something else. Steve. So if you if you were given the book, Larson, because yeah. this, this is a question ain't for me. You know my answer. Nope. Yeah, I want to yep. see that shit. If you were given the book, um, who would Roman Reigns take on next year at WrestleMania? Assuming The Rock's ad, uh, uh, not going to make it, right? Would you prefer The Rock over Cody? I think if I was running a, a wrestling company, I'd prefer The Rock over Cody at WrestleMania because that's 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 massive mainstream coverage because The Rock's involved. Okay, fair enough. I mean, ideally, if it was me booking for how who I want to see at the top, man, gosh, I need mean, Give me Carmelo Hayes beating Roman in the main event of WrestleMania. Okay, That's what I all seen. right, all right, all right. More That's realistic, what I seen. more realistic than that, though. Like, take the top crop. Like, would you? You would probably do Seth over Cody. Mm, I feel like Roman needs to beat Seth, though. So yeah, I'd do that. Have Roman beat Seth finally. Yeah, yeah. What about Gunther? Would you prefer Gunther over Cody? Oh yeah, give me Gunther beating Roman. Okay. And he's okay. trying to hold up like six different titles at one time. That's what I want to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the case could be made for something new, for something. Oh, yeah, different. absolutely, absolutely. But absolutely. like you know, I'll never, the, I'm never, I'm never going to make that case because if I in the next Cody to six the months or so the bloom starts to come off the rose a little bit with Cody and the fans get kind of like, all right, this is the same old Cody being a politician thing. Yeah, oh, man, the rocket to the moon, rocket to the moon. the The crazy thing is he's going to be able to like become an even stronger baby face by doing heel things like what he did with Jey Uso. That's gonna be fun to watch. I really hope they try to pull off some shit like that. It's like, dude, oh, it's yeah. like the Hogan was a he- Hogan was a heel shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That could be fun. Have him do a uh, WrestleMania nine. Somebody else, oh, yeah. somebody else gets that fucking match against Roman, and then he comes in <laughs> and steals it. I must avenge this this <laughs> this this injustice by yeah, exactly. winning the title from Roman myself. <laughs> uh, Alex Washington says, with Ali being released, do you think we could see that political character he wanted to do an impact? Uh, what do you think his potential is outside WWE? We talked about this a bit. Uh, we talked about the news about his release. We think the absolute world of Mustafa Ali. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I think we could agree with that. Tremendous performer, seems like a really good dude. Um, yeah, anywhere he goes, I think he's going to be successful because he's creative, he's a great wrestler, great talker. Like it's it is it's, it's crazy because you see him in WWE, you see him, and he's like, this is unlimited potential right here. I know I this know. guy can making the company so much money. Yeah, yeah, and they just they never really did anything with him. It's a yeah. Bummer. Yeah, that was a bummer. Yeah. Uh, B Cop says, outside of Seth's WrestleMania cash in, what is your favorite moment you guys have witnessed at a live show or pay per view? Well, I know yours is uh, seeing a guy get lit on fire. Absolutely not. Oh, it's the it was the opposite. That was like a that's the worst thing I've ever seen at a wrestling show. Man, my favorite moment I've witnessed at a live show slash pay per view. My favorite moment. So this comes to mind. 
Yeah. Is getting to sing Kaze Ninare when Minoru Suzuki made his entrance at the second Long Beach show. That's a good one. I'll say this. For me, it might have been being there for All In. Yeah. That atmosphere was unlike anything I've ever been a part of mm-hmm. because it was the most like fever pitch indie wrestling. We accomplished something together and everybody was into everything. The matches were all good. Some of the participants were questionable, but uh, it would like 11,000 people. Yeah. All being like so into something at the same time. It really felt like a special moment, like a really yeah, special. It moment. really did. It really did. That's that's a good answer, too. Uh, New Kyle here says, how strong of a champion do you see Ray Phoenix being in AEW? Oh, we didn't talk about that on our AEW show. How long do you think he's going to have that title? Now let's assume Mox is out. Uh, let's say they give him. A, let's say it is a minor concussion. In a couple of weeks, he's given the green light to return if he wants to. I feel like you still got to give Ray Phoenix at least uh, 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 four title defenses, successful title defenses, and then have Mox beat him for it. If that's the path they want, they want to continue going on. I think you do those title defenses on like, well, I don't know, man. Like, I think that'd be a Let good Let Mox move. go fishing. Give him a break. He doesn't want a break. He doesn't like that. He leaves and everything falls apart. Um, I think they'll be fine. Like, according to, I think it was a Wrestling Observer, a little bit of heat on Phoenix for the Moxley stuff is what I read what, today. What, and what, in what, what way? Giving him those drivers. Okay. I don't know. I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm just saying, like, look, I'm saying this. Yes. Like, a title run would be cool, even if he had a couple of defenses on high profile, whatever. I get the feeling that as soon as Mox is cleared, he's going to come here and squash the hell out of that dude. It seems likely, yes. That's that's sort of what I think is probably going to happen. Yeah, it seems likely. Yeah. Uh, Carlos Diaz here asks, uh, if you had to recreate it, who could give you the closest result to WrestleMania 28 six-star end of an era nowadays? So it would be a story that's a long burn with competitors, two competitors plus special guest ref that have a wealth of history. Uh, clearly, if if Mox came back to the WWE, you could do mm-hmm. that with the mm-hmm. Shield. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that could, could do it. Definitely do that with the Shield. The end of an era guys were a bit more advanced in age than those guys. I'm trying to think: is there anybody who's shit? How old was Triple H when End of an Era happened? It's late 40s or mid 40s? I don't think he was that old. I think he's maybe he mid 40s. Yeah, yeah. Who's in their mid 40s in the WWE right now? LA Knight. <laughs> that was a good one. Um, I don't know. Yeah, why are there? Why is there nobody from the? Why oh, is like Randy nobody? Orton? Orton. Oh and yeah, John Cena Orton, and Edge, John Cena, Cena, Brock. Yeah. yeah. Okay, the OVW crew from 2002. Yeah, not yeah. a lot of people are sort of holdovers from the uh, ruthless aggression era, huh? No, no. Like Shelton's, Shelton just he got released. Yeah, um, I mean, like so much of that was tied to trip for Sean and then Triple H's determination to be the ones to break Undertaker's streak. Yeah, right. And yeah. it all culminated in that match, not just them trying to break his streak, but like so much of their history together just culminated in that match. Yeah. So special yeah. circumstances. It, it was. I mean, you can do a thing where Cena. Like if they were going to give him a run, Cena and Orton are both trying to break Flair's record. Mm-hmm. I know Orton's still a little ways off from that, but yeah, it is what Cena is at sixteen and he's at fourteen. Is that right? I think yeah, is Cena's Orton sixteen. At, Randy's either thirteen or fourteen. I don't remember. If it's okay, 13 or 14. maybe triple was Triple H fourteen. Maybe yeah, maybe he right. was fourteen and Orton's thirteen. I don't know. They could do something around the all-time title holder. Yeah. Yep. record they could do something like that somehow involve edge because he's like i think like the most or one of the most decorated champions in, WWE. in terms of total titles yeah he's right high yeah up there. so like you could do something with those three guys for sure yeah yeah 
Uh, we can lightning round a few questions here. Louise says, I know it's not up to them, but should WB have a word with the networks about censoring the crowd? It's not up to them. Oh, okay. So networks will have standards and practices, of course. And so if they, un unless they want to be fined by the FTC, FCC, sorry, then yeah. you can't allow like, I guess the word asshole on your, on your show. Yeah. Like you Smackdown. need to talk to the rock about that. Talk to their wrestlers. Yeah. Okay. What are you going to do out there? I know you're the rock, but like, what are you going to do? I'm going to tell the crowd to, you know, like what if some, what if John Cena shows up and is like, well, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to tell the crowd to start chanting. Fuck you. Okay. Yeah. That doesn't translate, man. You know, and the rock's like, oh, I'm going to have the crowd chant asshole. Okay, dude, it's going to get bleeped. Can you like make it a word that's not going to get bleeped? Can you do, can you, with a butthole? Yeah. Doesn't have Rear the same end. sting to it. Rear end. <laughs> Front area. Derriere. <laughs> Anus. <laughs> go, okay. go, sign, go, go medical term. Anus. He's a rectum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, you gotta talk to you gotta talk to the wrestler. Be like, hey, so, under no circumstances, even you, Dwayne. Yeah, go out there and start asshole chains. Can't do that. Yeah, it's not good. Can't do that. Show them the the George Carlin video about you know bad words. What the, what's seven words you can't say on television? I'm pretty sure asshole was in there. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got a SmackDown tonight. We do. Uh, I got a who? Who I got? Ed Manning. Who's the Undertaker guy? Is that Ed Manning? Yeah, the Ed. You Manning. forgot? Wait. You said who do I got? Who's the Undertaker guy? Yeah, well, I got him right here. You want to talk to him? Hey, no, not at all. Oh, to it's too late now, dummy. Smackdown tonight. John Cena. I love him in the Fast and Furious movies. I like fast cars and hot women. He's gonna be on Smackdown. Are you excited about that? I mean, John Cena, like, yeah, he's fine. Sure. Do you like the Fast and Furious movies? Haven't seen any of them. Do you like fast cars and hot women? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. EO Skies is going to defend the WWE Women's title against Oscar. Really? That's happening on a SmackDown? Oh, shit. Yeah, it is. <laughs> that sounds more like a pay-per-view. You would think so. It'll probably be a walk finish, so it'll be on pay-per-view later. I'm going to wonk finish later on in the bathroom. You got that right. I'm going to wonk off, finish myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then we got Rey Mysterio and Santos Escobar versus the Street Profits. What is this match? Why are they doing this match? Oh, it's because the LWO had a thing. They got squashed yeah. by the Street Profits last exactly. week. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, Santo. you do watch SmackDown, huh? Yeah, on to, from time the Rock came back last week, and he made the crowd chant, and I don't know what they said because I couldn't. It was they were bleeped out. It's asshole. It's yeah, asshole. I, I assumed he had them uh, call the crowd like the c word, you know, the one that they use in the UK, but you can't say it here. Is that what it was? No, I said it was asshole. I, I can't read lips. It was. it was asshole. All right, well, I'm going to go honk myself off. I'm going to finish myself. I'll talk to you later, Larson. Would you like to watch me wonk off? No, not at all. <laughs> okay, he's gone. Really uncomfortable. He's why do you, gone. Why do, you, why do you bring him on? And did he talk about wonking off again? Wow. How, how did you know, God Steve? damn it, pal. God how did you know? That guy. Boy, oh, boy. He needs a, he needs a finger wag. You know what I mean? No, I like, think you probably assume that means something else. Yeah, he'll probably take finger wag as some sort of euphemism for masturbation. Something. Uh, you know, anyways. Uh, so that's going to do it for the show today. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate it. Have a good weekend. We'll see you around. Goodbye. Now you're falling off a cliff. <laughs>